we thought Melbourne's lockdown was harsh, but nowhere, nowhere have lockdowns been as brutal as now in Shanghai, China's largest city. China's dictator has insisted zero COVID because he's been boasting that dictatorships are better than democracies in locking down and beating this virus. And up to this point, it's worked. But now... And there's also got another problem, of course. China's own vaccines are weak and uh, vaccination rates not good. Well, as you get in a dictatorship, Shanghai officials have gone really hardcore to please the boss. They've been building... Walling off building complexes. If a building has even one infection, in some cases, everyone inside could be shipped off to quarantine camps that have been built in sports grounds, for instance. Uh, people who fight back face extraordinary treatment. And now some areas of Shanghai have even been told no deliveries at all, not even of food for two or three days. And any delivery men caught not following orders can get beaten. One truck got stopped by a man begging for food and then crying when given bananas and crackers. There are also videos circulating that I can't show you of suicides, people jumping off buildings. And there have been breakouts from lockdown buildings when one factory complex, in fact, had workers, a couple of workers test positive. Hundreds of colleagues fled to avoid getting locked up. In some areas, the frustration has led to angry protests. <laughs> Joining me from Shanghai is a resident there, Dutch freelance journalist Jaap Groleman. Jaap, uh, thank you very much for your time. How bad is this lockdown? Yeah, thank you. Um... It's, it's quite, uh, we all have seen the news, and so it's, it's quite uh, bad in a way. Like, we're on day 41. Um, some people are on day 60, so it's very limited freedom. Um, we had three weeks where we couldn't even leave the apartment, and now uh, at least we can walk in our compound, which is like a living, um, living district with, like, 40, 50 buildings. But uh, we cannot enter the city or anything, uh, and that's the case for most people in, in Shanghai. We've also read that some areas of Shanghai have been locked down so hard that the, the people there aren't even allowed to order in food for two or three days. Why is that? Yes, yeah, correct. And we also, they call this a silent period, um, but they could have also just called it like a don't buy food period. Um, but we just ended it also a few hours ago. Um, I think the... The governing body is uh, mostly uh, thinking that there are infections coming from those deliveries, um, so they don't want any deliveries for three days. Actually, it's not very clear where all the infections are coming from because some areas, they have been locked down for like 40 or 60 days, uh, and then suddenly there are still infections coming up. So it's also very hard to uh, contain. Gee, that's uh, weird. Why are the officials so very, very tough, do you think? Uh, you know, we've seen footage of uh, a delivery driver getting beaten up, um, uh, real fights between the, uh, the police health officials and some of the people there, doors being broken down uh, to get into apartments. What, what's going on here? Yeah, it, it seems the number one rule is, uh, the two top rules are like, um, if you get infected, you have to go to the quarantine camp. Um, and also nobody is allowed to leave. Uh, your compound or your apartment, which sounds very simple, but okay, what if somebody gets ill and they need to go to the hospital? Or what if a child tests positive and, uh, and the parents not, and the child previously had to go to the quarantine camp, um, but the parents not? Now this is this this has stopped, but uh, um, it's just people following the rules, and the rules are absolutely not flexible. And sometimes uh, there's no place for any uh, feelings in this. And there have been scenes of locals fighting the police, uh, mobs uh, breaking out of their buildings, uh, running away from factories where there's been an infection, people not wanting to get uh, thrown into quarantine. How tense is it in Shanghai? I, I think it depends for uh, everyone. It's a bit of a boring answer, but uh, the regulations slightly differ per uh, compound, per district, uh, even per building. 
Um, some people are very tense. Some people have trouble getting food. Um, and but I, I, I do think um, also yeah, the most viral videos, of course, we will see on on Twitter and on YouTube. Uh, but I think most cases um, people are just inside, uh, tired, and maybe a little bit angry. But in our compound, there's nothing like this uh, fighting going on. Have you got any idea how much longer all this is going on? I mean, I'm, I'm struck by you saying, you know, like in, in some buildings have been locked down for weeks and weeks and weeks and still they get infections. No one knows how. So how much longer will this uh, continue? Yeah, we do see that um, the numbers are going down. It has to be after a, yeah such a long time. Uh, so I'm hoping that for some areas in the city, it will be three, four more weeks. Maybe for other areas, it will be longer than that. I don't think the whole city is going to be released at once. Uh, if you're unlucky, maybe, yeah, seven, eight, we eight weeks. I don't know. It's very hard to say. Also, because th they're um, very set on getting this to zero, which is very challenging. It sure is. It seems like a fool's errand, uh, really, with the uh, infection with the virus now so infectious, the rest of the world unlocked and uh, China is still in lockdowns. It's really quite extraordinary, don't you think? Uh, yes, but this is very hard to answer as as uh, being being here. Um, there are a lot oh, of sorry, I don't want to put here. you in any uh, risk. No, but no, no, I no. Yeah, but I don't want to put you in any risk. No, it's not risk. Um, I hope that they can achieve this zero COVID, uh, but at some reasonable cost and at some reasonable respect to people. Uh, I, I hope that's going to happen. And um, also, at some point, the economy is going to have too much damage. Yeah, yeah, Kroleman, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. And uh, I hope the rest of the lockdown is a little easier for you and you're out of it soon. It's uh, not a nice situation to be in. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you very much.